The Akasambo Dam, Ghana's most iconic hydroelectric project and the lifeline of the country's energy sector for decades, is about to take on a bold new chapter in its long and fascinating history. In an era when nations across the globe are shifting their focus from traditional hydro and thermal power to more sustainable, renewable energy sources, the Volta River Authority has announced an ambitious plan that could redefine how the dam is used for generations to come. The proposal is to transform Akasambo into a massive power battery reserve, capable of storing renewable energy and releasing it when needed most. Before we dive deeper into today's update, take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Your support is key to helping us grow and reach more viewers like you. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss out on exciting updates. This concept, though still at the feasibility study stage, is already drawing attention for its potential to make Ghana a leader in innovative energy solutions across West Africa. The acting chief executive officer of the Volta River Authority, Inge Edward Echo Obenkenzo, revealed this vision during a recent monitoring visit by Parliament's Energy Committee to the facility, explaining that the dam could essentially act as a giant natural battery that balances the intermittent nature of renewable power sources like solar and wind. He noted that renewable energy, while promising, has one key limitation. It is interruptible. Solar panels generate power only when the sun shines, and wind turbines only turn when the wind blows. This means that at night, when demand often peaks, solar energy cannot provide the electricity needed to keep households and industries running. Building vast battery farms to store renewable power is an option, but the cost of such installations is extremely high, often making the adoption of renewable technology less financially viable for developing countries. This is where Akasambo's transformation into a battery reserve becomes a game changer. By preserving water in the dam during the day when solar energy is abundant and releasing it in the evening to generate power, the dam would function like a massive energy storage system at a fraction of the cost of conventional batteries. The idea is elegantly simple, but carries profound implications for Ghana's energy future. Inge Obenkenzo emphasized that this model could go beyond serving Ghana alone. Uh, with the sheer size of the Volta Lake and the robust water resources it commands, Akasambo could play a critical role in stabilizing power supply not only for Ghana, but also for the entire West African subregion. By ensuring that electricity can be generated consistently, even when renewables go offline, the dam would help regulate pricing and provide a reliable backbone to support renewable integration into the grid. For decades, Akasambo has symbolized Ghana's modern development ambitions, and this new chapter could once again put the nation at the forefront of innovation on the continent. Even as these futuristic ideas are being explored, questions about the structural health and longevity of the dam naturally arise. After all, Akasambo was completed in the 1960s, and many Ghanaians may wonder if such an old facility can continue to handle these new roles. On this front, um, the Volta River Authority has provided reassuring news. The acting CEO revealed that both the Akasambo and Akuse dams have undergone extensive retrofitting and continue to be subjected to rigorous international assessments. These evaluations, carried out every five years by a team of global experts, are designed to ensure that the dams meet the highest safety and operational standards. The most recent assessment, conducted three years ago, confirmed the structural integrity of the facilities and based on the recommendations provided, the lifespan of Akasambo has been extended by nearly 40 years, while that of Akuse has been extended by 30 years. This means that the dams are not only fit for purpose today, but will continue to be vital assets well into the future. The Energy Committee of Parliament, chaired by Honorable Emmanuel Bedzra, embarked on a three-day nationwide tour of Ghana's key power sector institutions to monitor progress, identify challenges, and make critical recommendations for policy and legislation. Their visit to the Akasambo facility was part of this broader mission, which also includes inspections of Gridco, PERC, ECG, and the Energy Commission. This tour reflects the seriousness with which the government is taking the transformation of Ghana's energy sector, recognizing that reliable and affordable power is the foundation upon which economic growth and development must be built. As Hanner Bedzra explained, the purpose of the tour 
is to fully assess the state of the sector and gather the information needed to strengthen it through effective policymaking. By engaging directly with the institutions at the heart of energy generation and distribution, the committee hopes to provide Parliament with practical, evidence-based recommendations that can secure Ghana's energy future. The story of Akasambo itself is one of vision and transformation. When it was constructed, it was not just a dam, but a symbol of Ghana's modern identity, a project that created the world's largest man-made lake and positioned the nation as a hub of hydroelectric power. The dam has powered industries, lit homes, and supported countless economic activities for decades. Yet, like many large infrastructure projects built in the mid-20th century, it now faces the test of remaining relevant in a rapidly changing energy landscape. The global shift towards renewable energy is not just about reducing carbon emissions. It is about creating systems that are flexible, resilient, and affordable. In this regard, um, Akasambo's potential conversion into a power battery reserve represents the kind of creative adaptation that ensures old assets can continue to serve modern needs. The idea of using hydropower dams as batteries is not entirely new on the global stage. Pumped storage hydropower, as it is called, has been implemented in several parts of the world where water is pumped to higher reservoirs during times of low demand or surplus renewable generation and released to generate electricity when demand is high. However, applying this principle to Akasambo on such a scale would mark one of the most significant implementations of this model in Africa. It demonstrates how Ghana can take proven global concepts and adapt them to local conditions, leveraging its unique resources for maximum benefit. This project also comes at a time when conversations about energy costs are dominating headlines. Ghanaians have long grappled with high electricity tariffs, and one of the promises of this new approach is its potential to help regularize and stabilize pricing. By providing a dependable way to supplement renewables, Akasambo could reduce reliance on expensive thermal power plants that are often run on imported fuel. This in turn, could lower overall generation costs, savings that may eventually be passed on to consumers. The economic implications are far-reaching, not only for households struggling with energy bills, but also for industries that need affordable electricity to remain competitive. At the same time, the initiative could bolster Ghana's role within the West African Power Pool, the regional electricity network designed to integrate power systems across West Africa. A stronger Akasambo that can function as a stabilizer for renewable energy flows would position Ghana as a reliable supplier and regulator of power in the subregion. This could strengthen trade ties, foster economic integration, and ensure that Ghana remains a leader in the energy landscape of West Africa. The vision shared by the Volta River Authority is ambitious, but it is grounded in careful planning. By starting with a feasibility study, the institution is ensuring that all technical, economic, and environmental considerations are taken into account before full implementation begins. This deliberate approach mirrors the long history of Akasambo itself, a project that was conceived and executed with attention to both detail and scale. The feasibility study will likely explore how best to integrate the dam's new role into Ghana's existing energy mix, what infrastructure upgrades may be needed, and how to balance this function with the dam's other roles in irrigation, navigation, and flood control. As with any bold plan, there will be challenges. Implementing new technologies, securing funding, and coordinating across different stakeholders will require effort and collaboration. Yet the fact that this conversation is even happening is itself a sign of progress. It shows that Ghana is not content to let its existing infrastructure simply age into obsolescence, but is committed to innovating and adapting for the future. This forward-looking mindset is crucial in a world where energy demand continues to grow and climate change compels countries to rethink how they generate and consume power. In the years to come, the success of this initiative will depend on continued political will, technical expertise, and public support. If the feasibility study proves the model viable and implementation follows, Akasambo could once again become a beacon of Ghana's modern identity, this time as a pioneer in energy storage and renewable integration. The dam, which once symbolized Ghana's leap into industrialization, could now symbolize its transition into a sustainable energy future. 
For ordinary Ghanaians, this story is more than just about technology or infrastructure. It is about the hope of reliable, affordable, and sustainable power. It is about turning a familiar national landmark into a tool for solving some of the, the most pressing challenges of our time. And it is about ensuring that Ghana remains a leader, not just in words, but in action, showing how old resources can be harnessed in new ways for the benefit of generations to come. If today is your first time watching this channel or you are returning to this channel for the exciting content, please subscribe to the channel for more educative and developmental projects across Ghana and Africa as a whole. Do you want to know about the state of a project in Africa? Then make sure to like and comment the name of the project you would like us to talk about and its current state.